76, the University of South Florida's Betsy Matson. Up against high flyers from Colgate, Rhode Island, Williams, Boston College, Northeastern. We're going to use Ms. Matson and Rivals to review a tool as essential to economics as a pole is to vaulting, the graph. But before we get to the main event, a few basics. This graph, based on totally made up data, shows the fictitious relationship between a person's hourly income after graduation and hours spent watching these videos. It's the old cliche in action, a picture's worth a thousand words. But how to draw this kind of picture? Well, let's wipe the slate away and start with the data, the numbers themselves. Let's say Ben here watched our videos for one hour and now earns $15 an hour working in a toy store. His pal Carby, on the other hand, eyes glued to the tube, watched these videos for 30 hours and Carby earns $200 an hour after graduation as chief economist of a giant toy maker. Here are the numbers for Sven, Darby, Glenn, Arby. Not so easy for most people to see a pattern here unless you put these data points on the graph. So let's get graphic. Since we're only showing the relationship between two variables, we have only two dimensions to work with here. The vertical axis and the horizontal axis. In economics, they usually put money on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal. Okay, here's Ben. One hour, not very far on the horizontal, $15 on the vertical. The data point is where the two meet. Carby, 30 hours, $200 an hour. Her data point is up here. And when we fill in Arby, Glenn, Darby, and Sven, a clear pattern emerges. The more hours you spend watching the videos, the more money you make, or so we'd like to think. In the Discover Econ software made for this course, by the way, you can play with a graph building exercise till you get the hang of it. Graphs can handle as much data as you've got. Here are the daily closing prices for the U.S. stock market from 1900 to 2000. Individually, gibberish. But graph them and you quickly see that while stock prices rise and fall over time, the general trend has been up, way up. Now, two-dimensional graphs can depict the relationship between any two variables, like stock prices and time, or say, height and weight. Ben is nine inches tall and weighs about two ounces. Being plastic, he doesn't have to worry about his weight. Ted is 40 inches tall and weighs about 1,300 ounces. He's been bulking up for a cold winter. And I'm 70 inches tall and weigh about 2,700 ounces. The relationship is again clear. The taller you are in general, the heavier you're likely to be. This is what's called a direct relationship, since both variables change in the same direction. Height increases, weight increases. But not every relationship is direct. Sometimes when one variable increases, the other decreases. The more hours of very loud music you're exposed to, research shows, the worse your hearing will be over time. Plotting it on a graph, you would have hours of loud music on the vertical axis, ability to hear on the horizontal. A few hours listening to super loud music, pretty good hearing. Lots of hours listening, no better than okay hearing. 
friends of ours who are here. So the variables on this graph move in opposite directions. As hours of loud music increase, ability to hear decreases. This is what's called an inverse relationship. Finally, we get back on track to graph the pole vaulters. The relationship we're after between height of vaulting and years of training. Okay, inverse or direct? How much practice do you need to be able to do this stuff? A lot. <laughs> years of experience. The more you work on your technique, mm -hmm. the better you get, yes, sir. the higher you jump. Yes, sir. So, I mean, how high could I jump? I've never pole vaulted before. You probably wouldn't make it off the ground. Wouldn't make it off the ground. This thing is heavy, actually. Go up like what? So I'm gonna go, I'll go like that. <laughs> well, not exactly Cirque du Soleil material, but instant replay reveals that after just two minutes of training, I cleared one entire foot, earning me a place on the graph. My trainer, however, Betsy Matson, went on to clear 12 feet. Matson has been practicing for 10 years, and she managed to clear 12 feet. So the relationship is again direct and again obvious. Yes, you got over. We end with this hopeful thought. That getting graphics should give you leverage in economics and the real world. More leverage even than launching yourself skyward. Plus, it's a whole lot easier.